Thank you very much. And so I will thank the, the organizer. And I want also, I also want to thank uh, Mark uh, for being here because uh, he introduced me to this uh, beautiful community. And I'm really, really glad to be to, to, to be part of this uh, this community. And uh, he actually teach me a lot. And and, and one total thing that he, he really teach me, it's trivia. <laughs> it's trivia. So, <laughs> so when you do a lab meeting, do not forget to bring cookies and trivia. <laughs> and and, and it's, really, it's really helped actually, and it's provide you really a nice group of people that really know each other and, and have a great, uh, great time. So thanks, Mark, for that. Um, well, you also helped me with, uh, with math, actually. <laughs> well, obviously you're here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so today I will talk about um, a work about uh, genetic diversity for a stage structure uh, population. So it's um, it's actually it's two work work sorry um, uh, a work with uh, Mark, uh, <clears throat> uh, Louis, and uh, Nathan Markelis about uh, propagation and how the diversity um, uh, change. Uh, during uh, an expansion and another work with uh, uh, Pierre Lafontaine about what happens if uh, you have um, a population which, which is age structure. Um, those all this kind of uh, population have the same diversity even when they are not moving and actually we'll see that it's totally different. <clears throat> so first a lot of plants and animals have life cycle and during life cycle, you have different, um, actually, um, stage of development. So you have birth, childhood, maturation, reproduction, and senescence. So you have different uh, stage of development, eggs, chicks, and juvenile, and then adults. And all these um, stage are uh, different in duration, in uh, so maturation can took more times, reproduction, you can reproduce, you can produce a lot of offerings or, or only one. Um, you can produce an offerings only one uh, during your lifetime or a lot. And that really change actually uh, your um, life history strategy. Uh, so if you look at this uh, example of uh, emperor penguins. So I took this one because uh, I work on Amper Penguins thanks to Mark too. <laughs> I find my collaborator on uh, the first Banff um, workshop you organized. So that was nice. Um, so you can actually split this uh, population into two types, the juveniles that do not reproduce and the adults that do reproduce. And so, um, so you have because of the life cycle, you have different type of individuals. And so how do you model that? Uh, you can, maybe the simplest model you can think about is it's um, a recurrent matrix model. So you have your population, you, with different uh, stages. So it is the number of individual of stage one, stage N. And you uh, project the number of individual from time t to time t plus one, and use um, a matrix projection j, a g, sorry, uh, that depend on the size of the population. So, for instance, if you look at the two stage um, um, population, so juvenile and adults, so adults can create juvenile, juvenile remain juvenile at a given rate, so they survive and they, they can maturate, or they can maturate and become juvenile, uh, adults, sorry, and the adults um, may die at a given rate, okay? <clears throat> so this is the simplest model you can, you can get. And I wanted to show you that with this um, type of model, you can actually split um, this stage structure population in different type, depending on the their develop their life history strategy. Actually, so you may have different developmental strategy or reproduction strategy. 
And so reproduction strategy, we um, uh, split into semelparous population and heteroparous population. So semelparous, you only reproduce once in your lifetime. And heteroparous, you will reproduce more than one time in your life. Um, time. And you can also distinguish between uh, precocious population and delayed population, meaning that precocious, the, um, you maturate really rapidly uh, compared to your um, uh, lifetime. Uh, while some population um, took times to maturate. Okay. Um, so doing this, you can actually sort the animals and plant population in different way and we will see that these uh, life history strategy have a huge influence on the diversity of the species <clears throat> so actually it's um there is this uh, beautiful uh, survey about this so they look at really a large a lot of uh, different animals and plant population and they look at the diversity and so first what you can see is that on average the plant diversity is low compared to the plant diversity okay so we see a difference and then they try to understand okay we see a difference in diversity why and uh, what they found is that longevity of uh, this, the, the individuals uh, have a significant impact on diversity while fecundity we might expect that fecundity have an impact, but apparently it's not that obvious. For certain species, um, it affects diversity. For other, it's not really um, obvious. Okay, but first, I want to talk about um, a project with uh, uh, Mark about uh, expansion. So when you have um, a population that expands their range, and they have a certain diversity uh, you will expect at some point that you're losing diversity but it's not really obvious when you have a stage structure population so we have uh, a population you with two different stages and now they um, can move over space x okay so you change a little bit the model you end up with this integral difference equation where k is the dispersal kernel so that gives you the probability to jump from location y to location x and you also have this um, uh, gross term that depend on you and this is this uh, projection matrix okay so if you have those two then we know that if you start with population like this like traveling Front, the population will expand in one dire in di direction sorry and you want to understand actually the diversity inside this front so what you do is you split your solution in different subgroups which are neutral alleles and you want to understand how those um, uh, allele will move over time in space okay so you end up for each allele group you have this um, equation is so it's similar to the entire population um expect that here so same growth rate same dispersal but they are different okay so what happened so if you have a population with juvenile and adults okay you will see um this thing so imagine that juvenile and adults of the same allele are, the, are at the same location initially okay then over time so the population spread in space so only the allele that are at the uh, leading edge will invade at some point and we expect that actually erosion of diversity because you're expanding so here no alley effect no stuff like this so erosion of diversity okay but what happened if the allele at the leading edge are different depending on the stage okay 
So imagine gray allele in a juvenile at the leading edge and the red allele for the adults. Then you end up with a mixing. Okay? So if you have a mixing at the front between juvenile and adults, then this, this mix will propagate over time. So now you can ask, what about this, this mixing? This mixing is definitely not the same as um, at the beginning, actually. So can we describe this mixing? Okay. So that is uh, the, the, the work we did with um, Pierre Lafontaine. So here, we forget about space. We only look at a population that is structured, two stages, and we want to understand the effects of the life history strategy on the, um, the diversity. Is the diversity decrease with um, this uh, strategy or increase? What, what is the effect of this uh, life history strategy? So first, let, let's, let's look a little bit about the, um, the dynamic of this system. So this system is quite rich at some point because depending on the, the parameters and especially the, um, the fecundity, you may have different type of um, steady state. Is your stationary steady state if the fecundity at some point is low? compared to the other parameters. And if the, the, the fecundity is uh, larger, then you may end up with a periodic steady state. So you see here, uh, if you look at the, um, the steady states, depending on the fecundity, then at first you have a stationary state, and then eventually you have um, two periodic steady state, and then four periodic steady states, etc., until you can reach uh, chaos. So what happened in those different cases? So what is the inside dynamic of those equilibrium? So here we don't have space, but we have so <clears throat> different type of individuals, adults or juveniles. And at the beginning we have a mixing, so different allele in juveniles and adults, and we want to see how those um, allele mix between juvenile and adults in the population. Right. So actually, for for one um, type of or each um, allele density, we can um, we know that they will convert to some proportion of the steady state, right? And we can actually compute this proportion. So first, what you can see is that if um, so, any allele will um, uh, will survive during this process, okay? So if a new allele arrive, then it will propagate into the population with a given uh, proportion, right? But one thing you can uh, look at is that this proportion does not depend on time, even if the steady state is periodic steady state, all right? So the frequency of the allele is fixed. It only depends on this initial uh, uh, frequency. Okay, and so for instance, you may have uh, the same proportion of the allele in uh, the population at the beginning, but because there are um, the frequency between the different stages is different. Okay, at equilibrium, you will end up with a different um, uh, frequency. Okay, so even if the frequency at the beginning is the same because of this difference in stages, then you can end up with different uh, frequencies. Okay. So, and another thing is that if, uh, yeah, so if the, um, the population is at uh, equilibrium, the um, asymptotic frequency do not depend on the fecundity. Okay, so 
to just show why in some cases the, 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 the diversity do not depend on the fecundity as it was observed in the, um, the work by uh, the cork and, and, and Al. okay so if it's really an equilibrium the fecundity is not involved in the diversity as something So I talk about diversity, but here I just uh, show you the, the frequency of some alleles. So, but from this, you can actually um, describe the diversity as the average at some point of the frequency of each allele. And we know that this uh, diversity will converge over time through an asymptotic diversity, which only depends on the initial uh, frequency of the population and um, the, the speed depend on the entire dynamic of the population. So the idea now is to look at this asymptotic diversity and how this asymptotic diversity um, depend on the characteristic of the population. These are small parus, heteroparus, and um, the different strategy. And so what you can see is that the response of the diversity with respect to the maturation rate, for instance, truly depend on the strategy, the reproduction strategy of the population. Okay, so in red, um, the population is uh, semel parus, so meaning that only um, pure reproduction events during the lifetime compared to heteroparous um, reproduction, so multiple reproduction, okay? And what you can see is that um, semel, uh, heteroparous uh, species, the diversity decreases with the maturation rate, while for semel parous uh, species, the um, they increase at some point with diversity. Another thing is we expect the diversity of semelparous species to be higher than heteroparous species. So depending on your life history strategy, we expect different degree of diversity. Okay. And so, for instance, we um, we show that among heteroparous species, the one that have um, a long juvenile stage have a higher diversity than the other. And it was something that is, was observed by um, Australitz in 2002, that the, um, the juvenile stage, the, the duration of the juvenile stage really influenced the diversity. And so the juvenile stage really increased diversity. But the thing is, it really depends on your reproduction strategy actually um, so now what happened when um, we have not an equilibrium but we have um, periodic uh, steady state well the story is a little bit um, different so uh, i have my um, bifurcation parameters which is the fecundity so when the fecundity increase you um, pass from a stationary state to a periodic um, steady state. And what you can see, it's depending on your life history strategy, the effect of fecundity will be totally different. For instance, with um, semelparous and precocious uh, in, um, species, when you increase your fecundity, the diversity really uh, decrease on average, okay? While for uh, it's rupers and delayed, so species that are long life at some point, um, increasing fecundity doesn't really have an effect on the diversity. Right. So at some point that is why um, when you're looking at the propagation, there is really a difference when you're looking at only one population or a population which is structured at some point. 
So here is the end of the story. Thank you for your attention.